All right, let's do this thing. <laughs> You guys are always asking me to bust out the 550 more, get those 80s tones, and I'm like, yo, let's do it. Because that's not really what this video is about, but I still, I, I just don't know. I just felt the need to do that. So what we're talking about today, though, is giving up on a dream as a musician. You guys have said that you like these kind of sit down and chit chat videos that we've been doing, and I'm like, let's do another one, because I have a, a topic I want to talk about here. And, you know, m my path personally as a musician has went through a lot of different changes. So if anything, this video is geared towards younger players who are on their own journey through stuff. And by younger, I don't mean age. I mean younger as a musician. You know, you could be 110 years old, but you've only been playing for one year. Well, you're a young musician at that point. So that's what I'm talking about here. Before we get into the bulk of the video, though, I got I got to plug it. Spon video sponsored by me. Um, we are running a sale on my brand new guitar course, Rock Guitar Essential Sequences. You can get it for 50% off this week. That's linked down below in the description. If you you know like what's going on here, dig the content, want to support the channel, that's all linked down below there. Uh, you can also check out an example lesson. So let's backtrack a few years to when I was 15. That was when I started playing guitar. Now prior to that, I did not know what I wanted to do with life. I didn't know if I wanted to go to college, didn't know any of that kind of stuff. And, you know, right around that that age, that's where, you know, schools and stuff really start talking about, you know, you got to get ready for college, you're going to start doing all these projects and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, man, I just, I don't know what I want to do because I'm not really passionate about anything. You know, I had friends who were like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, whatever it was. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't found my thing yet. And then I found guitar. which I quickly knew, I'm just like, oh my God, like, I love this. Now, I, I first started playing guitar, didn't love it right out of the gate. I actually put the guitar down, and it was my you know, one of my best friends, Steven, who was like, man, you ever gonna like pick up that guitar? Because he started playing at the same time, and I think, you know, he's just wanting someone to jam with. And then I was like, no, no, during the summer, after I get out of school, I'm gonna learn how to do it. He, he taught me Smoke on the Water over the phone, and I was pretty much hooked from there on out and just obsessed with guitar. And I'm like, oh, I found it. That's my thing. This is what I'm passionate about. I can't recommend it enough. You know, if, if there's a thousand, you gotta try a thousand things to find whatever you're passionate about. It's truly just such a rewarding, rewarding thing, you know? And I'm sure anyone who's watching this video, you're probably a musician. Music is, is, you know, probably your passion too. Like we have this very common bond between the two of us here. Now the next phase is what are you gonna do with it? You know, you're 15 years old, learning to play guitar, you love it, you're passionate about it. What are you gonna do with it? And you know, you, I got in some bands, played out. But what happened was I, I realized very early on the concept of touring and being gone for months and all that kind of stuff, it did not appeal to me at all. <laughs> I didn't have those aspirations to be that, you know, guitar, guitar guy up on stage each night and all that kind of stuff. I was like, I don't I don't think I want to do that, but there has to be something that I can do that's still music related. And I, I you know, I can play guitar all the time. That's that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to play guitar. And I discovered something called being a session musician. Now that looked like the perfect gig. That is what I wanted. Uh, when I was in my senior year in high school, we had to do what's called a senior project. And that's what I actually did my project on. I wanted to be a session musician. I, I, I basically looked for any excuse to bring my guitar into school. I remember when I did the senior project, like you had to present it in front of your class and in front of these teachers that would judge you. My opening <laughs> to, the, to the project was I brought my amp in, brought my guitar in, and the opening was Eruption. <laughs> You know, I, I just like going to, I remember the one teacher, um, was it Mr. Kowalski at, at Pioneer Tech? He might've been there and he's like, I'm, I'm sorry, can, can you turn that down? And it was not loud at all. I'm like, really? I'm like, man, you're, you're killing me here. Like you're killing the vibe. And they'll you know, turn the amp down, start it all over again. 
So, you know, do this in your project. I got, yeah, got a good grade on it and all that kind of stuff. Because you, you spend the whole year working on this like 10 page report about whatever it was. And that's where it led me to learning about guys like Dan Huff, you know, Mike Landau, uh, Steve Lukather, Tim Pierce, all, all these, you know, amazing session musicians. And I remember the teacher who was in charge of the senior project pulling me aside and just like, hey, you know, music is like a really hard career to get into. You might want to have a plan B. And I just remember telling her like without thinking, I'm like, my plan B is plan A. Now, the next phase of all of this was I was going to go out to MIT or the GIT branch of it anyways, uh, out in California, you know, Guitar Institute of Technology. I wanted to really hone my craft, make a career out of this. By this point, me and Gabby were together. Uh, she was also a guitarist, so she was gonna go out there with me. Like, we had this whole plan. And what happened was I ended up getting offered a job teaching. And I was just like, oh, that's kind of what I wanted to do anyways. So I started teaching. I started getting more and more students. And I'm like, I really, really like this. And I was thinking of leaving my job at Sam's Club to pursue teaching. Now, at the same time, this thing called YouTube had come out. What's going on, guys? This is Robert, and this is the first Beach Bum Lick of the Week. <laughs> And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool, because before when I was in high school, I was, I was at a tech school, so I was learning how to do things like video editing, audio recording, just like the very, very basics of these things. But it, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. That, that's, I was learning all this stuff. Like, I already knew how to do it. By this point, I was you know, out, of, out of high school. And uh, I started making YouTube videos every once in a while, just for fun. I mean, they're super crappy. You can go back. I've left all these videos up, so you can go back and see like the, <laughs> the atrocious abominations that my early videos were. But I leave them up, because I, I love seeing those. I'm like, man, you know, we've learned a lot here. Now, once I had discovered YouTube, it started crafting this new dream of mine, to where I, you know, I just, I remember telling Gabby, like, I really feel like if we stick with this, and, and we work hard, like this is something. Like I, I knew it was something that we could build and create our own. What, what I always kind of like had this outlook on was don't build something for someone else if you can't, build it for yourself. So what I realized was watching guys like Rob Chapman, Dave Wallerman, all, all these guys here on YouTube, I was like, they're doing their own thing, you know, and then they're like, they seem to be making a living doing it. And I'm like, that is really exciting to me to be able to do your own thing all the time. And I realized, I'm like, I want to pursue this. Like, I'm going to teach. I'm going to keep doing this YouTube thing. Because in the beginning, YouTube makes you no money at all. It is, t it's a total like money trap because you are investing in something that you don't know if it's going to pay off. You know, you're, you're trying to buy better cameras, better computers, better all these things to make better videos that are literally making you zero dollars. Like, because in the beginning phases, especially way back like 10 years ago, you had to apply for monetization and they almost never accepted people. It was like really hard to get you know, accepted. I remember I finally got accepted after doing YouTube for like, you know, two or three years, whatever it was. Um, I'm like, all right, you know, and like you know, the first month you make like $2 or something like that. And I'm like, it's happening, <laughs> you know, but that was it. It was a new dream, something was happening. Now I'm like, you know, this is ours. We're building this. And the coolest thing about it is as, as you know, YouTube grows, that you get these sub amazing subscribers, which are you guys, who are in here. And you start building this community. Now, if you're gonna travel down the path of YouTube, for one, it's a lot of work. It takes a very long time to see any kind of return from it, but it is very much worth it. It all takes a long time. Nothing is easy. Don't expect it to happen overnight. It takes years of hard work to build anything off of it. Now, in those beginning phases though, make sure you're very aware of the foundation you're laying for your channel. You don't wanna start a channel that's based off of negativity, roasting people, making fun of people, all this kind of stuff. You know, whatever it is, not every video has to be like bright and you know shiny and sunny and happy. You can have all kinds of different content, but that foundation that you lay, because what happens is, you see it all the time with people, they they realize that you build a fan base off of negativity you have a very negative fan base you know I, I feel like this channel has always been built off of the concept of sharing knowledge you know just good energy i hope like i i try not to put too much negative energy out there again not everything's going to be you know bright and shiny all the time 
but I think that we have built a very strong and positive community. And that has to be because the foundation was laid there from very early on, and that is the vibe of the channel. So make sure that you're aware of what you're doing early on with your YouTube channel. It, it's so crucial. You don't wanna have this fake you know, persona that you have to become this character every time you turn on the camera because that's gonna wear you out too. Like you, you see it all the time. Why so many creators go through burnout is because they've created something that's not actually them. And they have to like become this person when the camera turns on and it's exhausting, you know? And I've always just tried to be myself. I'm goofy, I'm weird, like, I can't help it. That's just who I am. Uh, I'm not the cool guy that uh, so many other people can, can be without trying, you know? I just, listen, I'm, I'm a weird long-haired guy from Ohio. <laughs> that's all there is to it. And um, that's just, you know, the way that it is. So let's hop back to the original topic. The dream of being a session musician kind of ended because I realized this new dream of creating this community here on YouTube where you can kind of do whatever you want. You know, it's, it's similar to a session as in the sen sense of creating different music, different styles, doing whatever you want with it. That became the new dream. So I think that part of it is you have to be willing to adapt and change. It can't be rigid, you know. I, I understand that this is like what, what I wanted to do, but I had to adapt to what was happening. And I think one thing for me on here that I'm just always proud of is I'm just proud of the community that we've built together. You know, like I kind of go back to what I said earlier, the foundation was laid, hopefully in a positive, you know, good hearted way. And it has continued to grow that way. You know, it's, it's, it's the way the seed was planted, you know, and I think that that is something that if you are a younger musician, guitarist, whatever it is, trying to do your own thing, be mindful of that be respectful to your audience, be appreciative, all these things, because I know I appreciate you guys very, very much. So we'll go ahead and end it there. Like I said, the dream session musician might have ended and it turned into a whole new journey. Like who, like who knows where that path would have taken me, but I'm happy that this one has led me here. Thank you guys all so much always for the support. It really does mean a lot. I appreciate all of you guys. If you want to, you can check out the new course. It's linked down below. And I'm gonna go ahead and end it bluesy. RG 550 style. <laughs>